So um, I just want to get started and kind of throw a loop out there and let you know that this is more beginner focused. Um, I'm, I was one of the developers who was bashing my head against the wall until something came loose, so I can relate and hopefully you either can or you soon will. Cool. So uh, when starting with a new tech stack or system, more often than not, we'll bite off more than we can chew and GraphQL is pretty much the defining rule of this. Uh, today I'm hoping I can help you avoid doing so uh, as we look to replace our old REST APIs or try and match them with some form of GraphQL implementation. Uh, so good day. Uh, I'm Lachlan, I'm from Australia, and this is my talk on refactoring your mind from REST. Ooh. Before I get started, uh, I just want to stress a few things along with my experience in GraphQL and who I am as a person outside of conferences, so I'm just going to plug myself as I do that. Next. Didn't work. Okay, uh, so who am I and why should you listen to me? Uh, you shouldn't, but you're in this room with me, so buckle in. Uh, on a serious note, I should talk uh, about how this is a bit of a subjective talk and my struggles may not have been your struggles, um, but I'm just trying to fill a documentation gap which I experienced. So my name's Lachlan Young, I am a self-taught full-stack software developer working in the React space in a company called Max Kelsen in Australia. Uh, I primarily deal in React, Mo uh, React for Web, but I recently got pulled onto a React Native project using GraphQL as one of the tools. Um, and this was pretty intense. <laughs> so I went to a confusing uh, how-to rabbit hole that is GraphQL, because my boss walked up to me one day and said, hey, we're going to build a React Native app with Apollo, AppSync, GraphQL, and Serverless. And then I was like, cool, I know one of them, let's get started. Um, <laughs> so that started in September 2018, and then we successfully completed the, the full version of the app uh, in December 1st. So uh, we're launching it then May this year with pretty good success. So it's certainly a usable framework and certainly easy to do, just hopefully you can stick with it. Um, so in a bit more depth, it flowed as follows. Uh, we started with React Native, uh, which connect to uh, Apollo, sorry, which connected to AppSync with the use of Apollo, which we then plugged into a service GraphQL function. Uh, and the GraphQL service plugin was what confused the hell out of me. Uh, primarily because I had hard-coded hard approaches to REST APIs. I was used to EC2 routes, I was used to even serverless routes, like how do I, what do I pull from the event? What kind of data am I getting? How do I connect that to the uh, database? And for about two weeks, I was implementing multiple attempts to plug in GraphQL where my REST API traditionally goes and it just was not working and it was causing me gray hairs by the second. Uh, so I hope today that you can avoid my mistakes, understand the best approach for your system, and if done correctly, GraphQL can be as reliable, if not more, as a REST API. Uh, so just a quick topic on today's talk. Uh, we'll be jumping into a brief overview of GraphQL and how it's connected. I'm also going to cover some of the gaps in f that I found in documentation and such when implementing uh, this in my project. Like I said, this is a bit of a war story of mine. Uh, connecting it was my biggest struggle. So I understood it existed in the API to server layer, um, but I just couldn't click my fingers and plug it in. Like, where do I put it? Uh, what were, where were the routes? Uh, how do I query my database? Do I even need a server? Like, if you look at something called Postgre file, you don't need a server. It's very confusing. So for today's talk, the answer is yes, you need a server. Uh, you make it query the database the same as REST, and your queries, uh, mutations, and subscriptions are now your routes. So it's my hope that as I tell you about resolvers, how to plug them in, how you connect to your schema, you can connect the dots on everything else and be up and running in no time. Cool, so what is GraphQL? Um, as you look at GraphQL, you're going to get confused with schemas, you're going to get confused with syntaxes, IDEs, NPM packages, and absolutely everything else in between. Uh, throughout the process, you're going to get tripped up on Prisma, you're going to get tripped up on Apollo, you're going to find a GitHub issue that was made one week ago and it may help you, but then you'll find another one that just confuses you even more. Uh, in simple English, uh, it's a simple API that's written in JSON, or more specifically, it's a data fetching uh, language. So where REST has get, put, post, patch, Oh uh, God, and delete. Um, GraphQL has query mutation and subscription. And five methods to three doesn't imply a lot of radical change. However, the way that these methods wrap the old uh, REST APIs is ingenious, at least in my opinion. So where you had two methods for a WebSocket, you just need a subscription. Where you had post, patch, put, delete, you just need a mutation. And where you had infinite amount of GET requests trying to get different forms of your data with different fields and JSON objects, all you need is one query. So. In layman terms, we understand how GraphQL uh, substitutes REST, but how do we implement it? At this point, it's still a bit too broad to nail. Are we talking about the client, where you move Redux in replace of Apollo's cache? Are we talking about uh, web, where you have local storage and you can just avoid the cache in general, which is a horrible idea, but you can do it. Um, perhaps you're talking about the server where you're trying to implement your clean GraphQL from the front end directly to a database. And this bit was where I really struggled. So at the time of development, there were so many articles with so many solutions, but to me, it just seemed like there was nothing to like coolly say, hey, this is how you connect it. Okay, so enough of the backstory slash struggle story. Let's move on. 
with GraphQL, you'll come across something like this. And this is a video which I don't know why I'm going to attempt to play. So, cool. <laughs> uh, whenever you read a GraphQL, there's a high chance you'll come across this. This is the, uh, the graphical IDE. And it makes it look really smooth and really, really tasty. So you give it JSON, you send it through, and it gives you JSON back. However, something I saw less explained was how do I get that nice JSON back? With the rest, it would go to an endpoint. I'd, deep, I'd break down the body, I'd break down the headers, query parameters, send it to my database, get what I wanted, return it how I wanted. With GraphQL, it implements something called resolvers. The implementations of these resolvers can slightly, different, slightly differ depending on your library. With a library like Apollo Server, you'd use resolver maps. However, we chose to use AppSync, which uses mapping templates. So a get user query was used to call the get, get user resolver. Uh, that left our service file looking a little like this. <laughs> so this is one of the only screens of code I'm going to show you, or one of the only that I'll, pro I'll show you, I promise. But I want to stress how we only have one function. This is called GraphQL Handler. So GraphQL Handler is now our, our one point of truth, our, our one endpoint. We have different data sources defined with unique fields. So we have get user, create user, and I think update user. Um, and then in GraphQL, we can run a switch case or similar to resolve depending on what endpoint's being hit. So pulling this full circle, the reason this is done is because GraphQL is still an API. It still needs endpoints and still needs method. Your methods are now just queries, mutations, and subscriptions. However, where a REST API would have multiple endpoints, GraphQL is designed to only take a single endpoint, and this uh, resolves depending on what it's called. So depending it this way, sorry, doing it this way at scale can allow for a much more lightweight system, especially when you pair it with microservices like serverless. So I have my GraphQL handler being invoked. How do I handle it? Remember those fields in the last slide? At Max Kelson, we ran a switch case to determine which business logic to call. And now we can treat it like REST. It's a lot less confusing like this, hey? So that's set up, but now what? Yeah, I won't have to write endless routes. It won't require endless configuration from endpoint to service, uh, to database, to callback. This approach has given me one point of truth, and I can direct all my traffic there as needed. However, it should be noted that with one point of truth, you also have one point of failure. Just because you use GraphQL doesn't always mean you should. Do you recall how I explained GraphQL is at its most a simple data query language or data fetching language? A GraphQL API is designed to retrieve the data how you want it, without any calculations needed on it. If you only want all emails for all users, you can send the get user query to the endpoint, however, only specify you want the emails. The rest equivalent of this would be multiple different endpoints for multiple different versions of your data. With GraphQL, we can simply follow our schema. Here it enters my second point of confusion. How do we structure our schema? Preparing one point of truth is the endpoint with a well-designed, heavily typed schema can help alleviate a lot of our concerns around endpoints. With a correctly typed schema, we can easily knock back bad requests before they even hit our server. However, <laughs> in our demo app, we have to get a user query, which requires a user type. And in that user type, we have uh, first name, last name, email, and mobile number, all of which require a string. Because of this, we don't need any fancy checking in the resolvers to say, hey, this does exist, or hey, this doesn't. We can remove a lot of our, our core generic logic, which we copy and paste all throughout our, our handlers. Because of this, uh, oops, sorry, GraphQL talks a lot how it lets you choose how you want your data. And with the schema file, uh, you really can. This is your point of truth, how you define what you want. Uh, you match it with client schemas, or depending on how you're interacting with it. Um, but yeah, this is the, this is the good stuff. <laughs> when you plug your schema into API, it will self-document what is available. And although short and sweet, an incorrect schema can really mess up your entire pipeline. It can do some damage and you never discover it because it's the end of your feedback loop. And there you have it. <laughs> That's it. That's my two missing pieces of the GraphQL and serverless. Please ensure you define your schema correctly. It will most likely be the last place in the feedback loop that you check, and I really mean that. Don't worry about seamlessly integrating with your, your database like GraphQL, with GraphQL like I did. Uh, resolvers are a thing and they're designed to be used. They essentially replace your callbacks or even your routes. I've thrown up a brief boilerplate on this project here. Uh, I should stress it was more of an afterthought that I put together on the plane over. Um, <coughs> but you can find the configuration files that I sent here, and it does work to a degree. Um, so in summary, I should stress, GraphQL is great. Um, it really is. I thoroughly enjoy it. I have, a I have struggles going back to REST API. But make sure you're using it for the right reason. I'm, I'm sure you'll be relating to this talk at some point if you haven't already. Uh, and thank you for listening. Thank you.